I've made these three little identical mugs. Today I'm gonna fire them and then I'm gonna seal each one with a different old world method for sealing pottery. And then I'm gonna take them back to my studio and we're gonna see how well each one is done. Earthenware is by nature porous. That is, it absorbs whatever liquid you put into it and that material will slowly weep through the walls. And so in order to make earthenware usable, it needs to be sealed in some way. In the past, I've made videos about sealing earthenware using traditional Native American techniques, such as using grease and starches. And I've also made videos about sealing earthenware using commercial products, like cutting board sealant and liquid quartz. But in the comments of those videos, I've received a lot of good feedback about further methods I could use to seal earthenware. And so today, I've done some homework, and I'm out here to seal these mugs using old world techniques. That is, techniques that were used in Europe and the Middle East in ancient times. So the three materials I brought to seal pottery with today are beeswax, tree sap, and flax seed or linseed oil. So I have three mugs and three sealing techniques. Do I have a control? No, I do not, because I'm not a scientist. I'm merely going to seal these three mugs, take them back and test them. My first order of business is to get this pine pitch melted. So I'm just setting it on some stones above these hot coals to start warming it. I learned everything I know about cooking on coals in the outdoors from Cowboy Kent Rollins. My wife Tanya also came with me today and she's watching the firing while enjoying the warm spring weather. So here's the deal with sealing earthenware. Back in Roman times, earthenware was extremely common. Glaze, they had some glaze in Roman times, but it was almost never used. Most people used earthenware on a daily basis in ancient Rome. So my question was, how did the Romans seal their pottery or they just deal with that weeping? I made a Roman oil lamp last year. I made a video of that. I'll put the link right up here in case you want to see that. And the first thing I had was problems with the oil just weeping out and just making an oozy mess everywhere. I did some reading about sealing oil lamps and my friends over at Potted History said that a lot of those oil lamps had residue of milk in them, that they were milk sealed. Well, that was an interesting clue. I've done milk sealing. I did a video about milk sealing. I'll put the link down in the doobly-doo in case you're interested in that. But then I did some more reading and I was thinking especially about ancient amphora. So those big amphoras that the Romans used to transport olive oil and wines all over their empire, across the Mediterranean Sea. Think about that as compared to like my little oil lamp which was oozing olive oil all over the counter. If you're transporting olive oil from North Africa or Spain to Italy, you didn't want that stuff oozing out all over inside the ship. That'd be a mess. Wikipedia, which, you know, granted isn't the best source of information. Wikipedia had this to say about how the Romans sealed their amphora. Roman amphora were terracotta containers. Once the amphora was complete, the maker then treated the interior with resin that would prevent permeation of stored liquids. Other online sources also reference beeswax or a combination of resin and wax. So to me, that was gold. A lot of people in the comments had suggested that I try sealing with pitch. And I always said, pine pitch, that stuff's gotta taste terrible. But I haven't tried it. And you, and you really can't knock it till you try it, right? So I thought if they were willing to put wine into amphora that were sealed with pine pitch, and it didn't affect the taste of the wine, or did it, right? Uh, then maybe I can try it in a coffee cup. So that's my plan here today. I'm gonna seal one with pine pitch and beeswax mixed, just like the ancient Romans supposedly did. I'm gonna seal another one with just beeswax, which was a common suggestion in the comments of those sealing videos. And the third one with that flaxseed oil. And then at the end of the video, I wanna take them back to my studio and try drinking hot coffee in them. I wanna see if the hot drink will cause that beeswax or that pitch to kind of loosen up and get in my drink and impact the flavor. So uh, that's really the end goal is to realize what's a good way to seal and then actually be able to use it without, you know, ingesting your sealant. My fire's starting to burn down now, so I'm gonna get those mugs out of there. And while they're still hot, I'm gonna start putting that sealant in because that hot clay is gonna absorb that material better.
The difference between these materials is that the wax and the resin are gonna harden at room temperature, but that oil is not. And so it's gotta kinda be polymerized by heating it up. And so here I am putting it on the coals, all different sizes, to try to heat up that oil and make it kinda polymerized. I'm also trying to burn the crud out of that strainer. All right, I got these all fired and sealed. Which one of these do you think you'd drink out of? Mm. I mean, you smelled them all when they were being sealed. Which one smelled like something you wouldn't mind your coffee smelling like? Candle wax? Candle wax, yeah, okay. So <laughs> so the, the pine one smelled like pine pitch. Not that appetizing, right? No. The, uh, the, the, the beeswax smelled just like a, a hot candle. And uh, the flaxseed oil smelled like linseed oil. So yep, yep. Um, I don't know. Linseed oil wasn't terrible, but at the same time, it reminded me of like woodworking shop, not necessarily food, right? That's kind of what I was thinking. So. Anyways, I'll, uh, we'll take these back home and, and uh, drink some coffee and see how we do. And then we'll talk a little bit about the successes and failures we had here. All right, back in the studio now. Let's talk about lessons learned, uh, what I could have done differently or better. Uh, first of all, uh, I got flammable material all over my welding gloves that I use for firing pottery. I got quite a bit of pitch, oil, and wax on these gloves, so I'm thinking maybe these aren't such a good idea to use for firing pottery after this adventure because I don't want my gloves to burst into flames. All of those materials are at least somewhat flammable. Pitch and wax are actually quite flammable. So, um, they, you know, they were already getting worn out. I've got a hole in them right here uh, that you could literally see my finger through. So they were probably at the end of life already, but uh, it is something to keep in mind that if you're gonna be doing this and you know, pouring pitch from one container into another to maybe have a pair of gloves that you're not using for firing frequently, because like I said, um, you know, I would be uncomfortable wearing those at a pottery firing after this because of the pitch being on them. The other thing is uh, when I was done coating the inside with the pitch, and the same happened for the wax. Uh, I had quite a bit of excess kind of floating around in there in the bottom, and I wanted to set it upside down so that that excess material could drain out of it, right, and just leave the coating. I set it upside down on the sand, and then later when I picked this up, it just had all kinds of gravel and sand just stuck all over the mouth of it. Uh, so then I was able to stick it on some rocks over some coals and kind of melt it a little bit, and then I used a stick to get most of that off. Uh, but still, there's quite a bit of grit uh, stuck in my pitch here. Now, maybe that would have been the case at any rate because I was firing in a wash bed and there was a lot of sand, but uh, I think it would be good if I had some kind of a surface, even if it's just a piece of plywood or something that I could uh, set this on upside down and, and not stick it in the dirt or the sand and get crud all over it. Okay, uh, let's talk about sponsorships, right? This video is sponsored by myself. So I'm getting close to 100,000 subscribers. I think at the time of recording this, I'm just over 97,000 subscribers. And I'm getting to the point where I could probably make some money getting sponsors on my videos. The trouble is, I'm really sensitive to just advertising random junk to you guys that I don't need and you don't need either. I really want to advertise something I can believe in and can wholeheartedly endorse for you. And so really the best thing for me to do is to endorse my own products. And so that's why uh, I'm not getting a sponsor. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about uh, the classes that I offer. Uh, the Ancient Potters Club is, is a really great way for you to learn more about primitive pottery. We get together every Wednesday night to make pottery together over Zoom. Uh, there's a chance there to ask questions, uh, to talk to some other people that are doing the same thing as you. If you are interested in ancient pottery and primitive pottery, and you're interested in growing a little more, uh, the Ancient Potters Club is a much deeper dive than you're gonna get on a YouTube video. So you might wanna check that out. I'll put the link on the screen and down in the doobly-doo. And then you also will have access to all four of those master classes that I have. There's outdoor pottery firing, uh, coil pottery, wild clay, and natural paints, pigments, and slips. So uh, check that out if you're interested in learning more about primitive pottery. Now, let's talk really quick about what I'm gonna do to test these. I wanna know two things. I wanna know how well sealed they are. But I also wanna know how the material I put in them might influence the flavor of what I might eat or drink out of them. So I'm gonna make myself a hot pot of coffee. And then I'm gonna fill each one of these up with a measured amount of hot coffee. I'm gonna let it sit in there for a certain period of time. 
and then I'm gonna try drinking out of it and see if I can taste the material. I really don't want any of them to add like an oil slick on top of my coffee or any flavor. But then beyond that, I'm gonna leave that hot liquid in there for a set period of time, an hour. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna measure it again to see how much has leaked out. And then I can get a relative idea among these three sealing techniques, which was most effective. Five minute timer. All right, these mugs have had five minutes sitting here with a cup of hot coffee in them. Let's see how we're doing. Uh, this is the one that was sealed with pine pitch and it has a noticeable oil slick on the surface, unfortunately. Now perhaps with continued use or maybe even after the first use, this would go away, but for now, it's a little troubling because I don't really want to eat pine pitch, but let's uh, take a taste and see. Not noticeably piney, but then again, uh, it is black coffee. You know, it, it's strongly flavored to start with, so uh, might be a little more telling if it was something with a lighter flavor. Now this is the one that was sealed with beeswax and no oil slick does not smell waxy. Does not taste waxy. No waxy residue in my mouth. That's probably a good sign. To clarify on this beeswax one, uh, I expected to have, you know, like a coating of wax on the inside and it, it came out really clean. So I assume most of that wax actually soaked into the body of the pot, which is what I wanted. Okay, and then this is the one that was sealed with linseed oil. And again, a little bit of an oil slick, a little bit of a, of a linseed oil smell, which is of the three, actually, you know, the strongest smell. This, like I said, this didn't smell piney. And that's, it smells linseed oily. And that's not a great smell, let me tell you. It is, I might point out, food grade linseed oil. It, it is uh, safe for human consumption. Just doesn't smell that great. And um, maybe, maybe a tad, maybe a tad linseed oily. I don't know. Um, it could be, you know, it could be smell. It could be that I'm smelling it and that's making it, my mind think I'm tasting it. I'm gonna set another timer for an hour and then I'm gonna come back and see how much leakage we have. One hour timer. All right, I'll see you in an hour. Okay, so it's been an hour. Let's look at how well these are holding water. I've got my measuring cup, and if I can keep from spilling, I will carefully pour it back in the measuring cup and hopefully get some idea of how well these have held the coffee over the past hour. Um, first of all, there is no, uh, there's no damp spot under any of these, and none of them are damp on the outside. Uh, this first one that I just poured out is the one that was sealed with the linseed or flaxseed oil. And it does have some spots on the outside that appear to show dampness. Uh, it, they're not damp to the touch, but uh, they have a discoloration uh, that indicates some dampness to them. Uh, and like I said, it still smells quite linseed oil-y. And it is down, it is down, um, it's down by a quarter cup, uh, which seems like a lot, given that there's none on the outside, a quarter cup is a lot. Uh, so, but it, it literally says three quarters of, of a cup and I poured a full cup in there, so. Okay, the next one was sealed with beeswax. Let's see how that one does. That has significantly more. It is down a tiny bit from the cup, um, but less than an eighth of a cup, I would say, that it's down, so uh, it held much better. It doesn't have any of those discolored spots on it like the other one did that indicated dampness. Um, there's no dampness at all on the outside that you can feel. There's no smell to it. Now, I would say that was pretty good. That was a pretty good seal just from one coat. Now I would point out that perhaps the oil needs more than one coat. 
From my past experience with sealing, I found that sometimes sealing with oil requires multiple coats. So it might be wise to give this a coat of that flaxseed oil, to put it in a warm place, let it kind of soak it up, give it another coat, let it soak it up, and to be fair, this was one coat. So uh, perhaps more would be needed. But you have to say, uh, the wax works pretty good. There's not a lot of time invested putting different coats on. This was one coat, one and done, and it seems to have been fairly effective. Okay, let's look at the one that was sealed with pine pitch. Uh, this one has done the best of all. This is almost the complete one cup that I put in it. If it's down any, it could be like a tenth of a cup, something like that, certainly not much. And again, I'm noticing that oil slick right on the surface of this measuring cup. So there is a definite problem with oil slicks, but as far as the sealing method, uh, it sealed it, it sealed it well. It doesn't feel like there's any moisture on the outside of this, no residues that I can see. It feels very dry to the touch all the way around. Uh, looks like it worked really well. No piney smell. And as I said earlier, there was no piney taste. Uh, so perhaps, you know, it, this could be cleaned out. Perhaps the oily residue can be cleaned out, rinsed away, and then you would have a good cup that would hold liquids for a long period of time. So I would say uh, if I had to choose one of these, uh, I'd go with the beeswax or the pine pitch any day of the week. Uh, those are both among the best sealants that I've tried so far. The ability to seal your earthenware is a great advantage, opening up all kinds of possibilities for your homemade earthenware pottery. But remember, sealing isn't always necessary. In some cases, that porous ceramic can be an actual advantage. For example, here in the American Southwest, there's a long history of using porous earthenware to keep water cool by evaporation. I made a video last summer all about the use of Oyas in the Southwest for keeping water cool. I'll link that video up right over here, so go check that out and learn about another use for earthenware that is unsealed. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Oh man, you gotta love those motorcycles, don't you? The little light here, but where's that? I don't see it now. Where's that stupid light? Maybe it's up here.